Okay guys, so we're back in the garage again today and we're playing Corvair. And um, what I wanted to do today was just spend a few minutes talking about uh, one of my last completed projects, which was to convert this 1964 Monza to an electric fuel pump system. Um, now, uh, when I decided maybe a year and a half ago to start converting all of my Corvairs to electric fuel systems, um, I did a lot of research and I'm kind of a visual guy and what I would have liked to have seen then was more videos out there about a completed system that somebody's gone through that it's proven and it works and that they're happy with and maybe kind of a, a breakdown step by step of each component that's in, that's involved where it's installed why it's installed and uh, how the whole system kind of ties together as a whole to kind of help me decide how to design my own system so um, that's what we're doing today um, hopefully it's some information that might uh, be helpful to someone out there who's in the same boat that I was in trying to figure out how to lay out their system and what what components are important to them and why so as always, I am not a fuel system scientist. Um, this is not a how-to video, uh, not an instructional, and I'm not giving advice to anybody about how to install anything here. So if you're not comfortable with this kind of work, um, by all means, uh, contact a professional. <laughs> That's not me. So in any case, i um, got a lot of stuff to go over, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, as we come to the back of the car, There we go. So hopefully kind of the first thing you notice is that, you know, I really tried on this install to try to keep the engine bay um, and the, the trunk looking as stock as possible. Uh, and so that it doesn't just like jump out at you that, hey, someone's, you know, converted this and there's a bunch of crazy colored wires and, and dials and gauges. You know, you, you have to make modifications, but I've tried to make it look as, uh, as stock as possible um, just for aesthetics. Uh, purposes only. So um, I think we did that pretty well. It's better than my other ones I've done. So um, I think it worked out. Now, the first uh, component that you're going to have to deal with is to get rid of your old fuel pump. And it sits right here and it, it's dead and it's uh, been replaced. So you get it out of there and you now need to plug your uh, the hole here going down into the crankcase with something. There's a bunch of ways to deal with it. Uh, this is how I did it. Um, you can get a freeze plug sticking in there. They make really nice uh, shiny billet ones that from you can get from vendors. Um, you can get a dummy fuel pump. There, there's all kinds of things you can do. What I decided to do was to, um, on this one, was to go um, get a little creative and for free, take my old fuel pump that broke, uh, take it apart, grind down um, the, uh, grind off the uh, lower flange off of the bottom of the fuel pump, leaving me just the, the base that you, that you plug in with and um, sealed it off with a rubber grommet and a bolt and uh, it works as a plug and I think it looks cool it looks kind of stock um, it's recycling the old fuel pump into a new fuel pump uh, application which is kind of cool and um, if I ever want to go back to a mechanical pump I can just unbolt this as it would uh, with the factory uh, application and this pops right out and I can put a fuel pump right in there so um, that's how I dealt with my fuel pump deletion. Okay, so the next piece of the puzzle in this system is going to be the oil pressure safety switch. Now, um, basically what the Corvair comes with is this single pole switch here for your dummy light so that your light will come on on the dashboard if you run low on oil pressure. You still need that um, and it plugs in down below into the engine case. Now, in addition, you're going to need this three pole uh, oil pressure switch that will tell the pump to turn on and off. So what I did basically is I just came down and uh, built out of basic NPT um, fittings a little Y here so that I could house both of them in the same place. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I needed to um, make a smaller plug for my fuel pump location because there, there wasn't room for all of this in the same place. There just wasn't room. And I really wanted to have this location in this configuration for the oil pressure safety switch. Now, just uh, basically as an overview, the oil pressure safety switch has three poles. Uh, one sends power to the pump as a signal uh, through a relay, basically. And the other two are uh, signals, one from the starter and one from the uh, accessory from the um, key up front in the dash. So the, the basics of this are one for safety and two for convenience. First of all, it will, if, you're, if you're driving and you get in a wreck and the engine shuts off and you lose oil pressure, the, the fuel pump will shut off automatically. Um, you know, that doesn't happen every day. So m more realistically and even better than that 
is the convenience that every time you get in and out of the car, you turn the key on, you crank it over, you run the car, the oil pump or the, the fuel pump, it turns on and off automatically. When you turn the key off and you're done driving, the fuel pump shuts off automatically. So there's no switches, there's nothing to remember, there's no toggles. You just um, get in and drive the car like it was a, a normal and a stock application and the thing works. So um, this is how I um, installed and handled my oil pressure safety switch application. Okay, so the next piece of this puzzle is going to be what to do with your existing fuel lines going to the carburetors. Now I've removed the uh, air, filter, air filter assembly for this part so that you can get a better look at what's going on. Now uh, originally uh, the fuel line comes in from the, uh, from the firewall back in around, feeds the fuel pump right in this area, and then it comes out and branches off and hits uh, each of the carbs. Now these carbs are symmetrical in their construction uh, they're, they're just flipped backwards uh, uh, in their application. So uh, very nice and very easy. What you can do is just, once you remove all of the fuel lines out of here, you can reuse the carburetor fuel lines and the T. All you have to do is just swap the fuel lines from carb to carb, left goes to right, right goes to left, and when you invert them, they end up landing right back here at the T location, just as if it was at the front of the motor. I'm sorry, this would be the rear of the motor because it's a Corvair, uh, but it just lands here instead, and it's... Um, it, it hooks back up all the same. Now, from here, this is where you have to kind of uh, start doing a little bit more fabrication. You're gonna need um, a fitting to get into this T and uh, a flare fitting to get uh, onto your supply line. And so all I did was just went down to, from here out, I just went down to my local hard, or, um, auto parts store, picked up a three foot section of um, the appropriate sized fuel line that's pre-flared and ran it from here all along back here and then out the firewall uh, to the um, fuel line which is interrupted by uh, the fuel filter which I will show you uh, next. So this is a really clean way to do this. Um, when, the fuel when the air filter assembly is on here you can't even see the fuel lines. They just float and hover back here and stay out of the way. It looks really clean. It cleans up the front area here. I've seen a lot of guys they leave the, the fuel um, in the front here and they just kind of use a piece of rubber right here to kind of uh, patch up the distance between uh, the pump and their, their existing line and I'm not into that. I don't like the thought of the, the belt coming off or fraying out and slapping it and, and rupturing it or you know uh, rubber fuel lines in the, the Corvair engine compartment are a no-no. Uh, in this application there aren't any. It's all, uh, it's all steel lines or um, new lines um, uh, for this application. So it turned out pretty good. I like how it worked out. I haven't had any leaks. I haven't had any problems. Uh, I've got good fuel flow to the carburetors and it seems to work out great. So this is how I dealt with the relocation of my existing fuel lines. Okay, so for the next piece of the puzzle here, uh, which is the fuel filter, I went ahead and removed the back wheel uh, so that you could get a better look at what's going on. And so back behind here, this is the new fuel filter for this system. And um, this is a really good place to put it because there's already a section of rubber hose here uh, from the factory, the Corvair comes with um, hard fuel line from the front of the car to the back, but in between the, the gas tank up front and the hard line, there's a section of rubber, and in between the hard line termination here and the hard line uh, that goes into the um, engine compartment, there's also a section of rubber. Um, that I think they put that there for uh, vibration dampening so that you know fittings don't wobble loose while you're uh, vibrating down the road. So in any case, that makes a great place to locate your new fuel filter. All I had to do was just get a section of uh, rubber hose that goes from the termination of the hard line uh, to the filter and then uh, another section of uh, rubber hose from the fuel filter to the new hard line. Now this is, this is the other end of that um, hard line that I got from the auto parts store that's flared, pre-flared on the other end at the T inside the engine compartment. This is the other end of that. Just had to bend it and wind it around until it fit up and met up with this exactly. All I had to do then was put a bubble flare on the end of this uh, pipe and um, to, to receive a, um, a hose clamp and a, and a rubber fitting. And this section is done and um, works great. The reason it's really cool here is because all you have to do is pop the wheel off and if you ever have to replace your fuel filter, it's right here, easy to get to, and it keeps the fuel filter and the rubber fittings and the rubber hose full of fuel out of the engine compartment which is um, always good and is the goal here. So this is how I dealt with my fuel filter. 
Okay, so for the next piece of the puzzle here, I'm going to take you inside the car. Uh, before I go and show you the pump that's under the car, uh, I want to go inside here and show you what I've done um, under the dash, which is really cool. So if you look up underneath the steering wheel column right here, right here, I have got a momentary switch that I've installed. I've used uh, factory holes, I didn't drill anything, and I made this little, uh, this little tab uh, bracket, mounting bracket, and I've installed just a real simple momentary switch. And this is a prime button for the pump, so that if you um, if the car sits for a month or two and the the gasoline evaporates out of the carbs, and instead of just cranking on the starter for you know an indefinite period of time and um, and wearing out your starter to get the the carbs primed, you can just come here before you start it up, push this button, and as long as you feel like doing it, and it'll prime the carbs for you. So. Uh, works out really well. That's how I handled that. Now let me turn the key on real quick so you can see how this works. Key is on now. Now I have uh, the ability to hit this. Now listen to this. I don't know if you'll even be able to hear this. I've, I've gone to a different style pump this time. It doesn't clickety-clack and it doesn't thump. It's a rotary style, uh, like a motorized vein uh, impeller type pump um, that's super quiet. So listen if you can even hear this. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is so quiet. Uh, you can't hear it when you're driving. It's uh, unnoticeable. Uh, it doesn't even cross your mind that you have an electric fuel pump. Um, I am for sure using this kind of pump from now on. I've uh, been really happy with it. So in any case, this is how I handle uh, a prime button on this uh, fuel system. Okay, so for the next piece of the puzzle, we need to look at the actual fuel pump itself. So I went ahead and jacked up the front of the car and put it on a ramp so that we can get you under here and get you a better look at what's actually going on down here. So get under here. And this is the actual fuel pump itself. Uh, this is the, you can tell kind of by the shape of it, the cylindrical shape of this, that it's the motorized vein impeller type instead of the uh, kind of the square uh, thumper type that um, I have used in the past uh, that's just super loud. Now, um, this is very simple. We have a line coming in from the tank, wraps around, uh, hits the pump, comes out of the pump, and uh, hits up and catches the uh, hard line that goes into the belly pan and to the back of the car. So it's super easy. You got a ground wire and a, um, a power wire and um, installs uh, no problem. There's plenty of room. It has its own rubber mounted strap uh, with a single bolt mount. You do have to drill a hole for the, uh, for the bolt here um, so you can bolt that up. But um, super easy and simple to install and no problem. Now, the only real caveat that's important here is that you need to make sure you're installing this thing up inside of the frame rail uh, so that uh, the front of the car is, is that way as as you come along and you hit railroad tracks or rocks or, or whatever the problem is, you're hitting the frame rail and not the pump. If it was hanging down below, it would be exposed and it would be very dangerous and uh, well, you know, you'll know, you break your pump the first time you hit a bump. So uh, make sure you're getting it mounted up inside the frame rail. And uh, this is the, um, the suggested accepted location for the fuel pump. Um, it's worked out great for me and uh, super easy to put in, super happy with it. Okay, so for the final portion of this uh, fuel pump installation, we go into the trunk of the car up front. And as you can see, once again, I've tried hard to not have a bunch of craziness going on in here and to make it look mildly stock. And so that if you look in here and just glance in here, you don't see that there's just a bunch of crazy stuff going on. Um, so let me walk you through kind of what I've got going on. Um, the wires. Uh, for the the brains of this outfit, hopefully you can see they kind of they come in where the, the they normally come in anyway, and I've got them routed and zip tied up around where they would normally uh, where they, where you already have wires going uh, for the tail lights. I'm sorry for the headlights, and so and then I have uh, everything terminated out over here um, at this uh, component block, and this is kind of the brains of the situation, and so what I've got here is an inertia switch, which is basically a crash sensor, and I've got a relay, uh, which is responsible for turning on and off the system. And so this is very simple and very efficient, uh, but, but adds a lot of security and safety and reliability to this entire fuel pump conversion. Uh, very, very basically, uh, the, I've got a, a solid line of power coming directly from the battery at the back of the car all the way to the front to this relay, uh, which is interrupted with this inline 10 amp fuse. And so it doesn't interact with any of the 60-year-old wiring or um, uh, the fuse uh, panel or any of that. It's a standalone system, so I'm, I'm not relying on, on old, brittle wiring and connections. So 
Um, this, re this relay uh, turns on and off the system uh, based on the input from the oil pressure sensor in the back and this crash sensor in the front. And so um, once, the, uh, once the criteria of the, the, the crash sensor and the oil pressure switch are met and you turn the key on, this will turn on the pump. Either you lose oil pressure or you get into an impact and this senses it, the, oil, the uh, fuel pump will no longer have any power. So um, super elegant, super simple. I, I, again, I didn't drill any holes. I just made this little tin bracket out of stuff I had laying around and rubber mounted it to the body. Um, if I want to get rid of it, I haven't made any holes or made a mess. I can go right back to stock um, application when I'm done with it. Uh, otherwise, uh, this is kind of, like I said, the brains, this component block, the brains of the situation. And um, it, it adds safety and it adds reliability. This being my wife's car, uh, I want her to be able to drive this thing around with uh, you know, full um, confidence in the systems that I've built and made for her. I don't want her to have to think about turning on the fuel pump or turning it off, or if she does get into a wreck, you know, what, what does she need to do with the fuel pump? It's all automatic and it's all safe and it's all reliable. And so far I've been super happy with how it works. So um, this is the final uh, piece of the puzzle, uh, the component block. Okay guys, well, that is my complete fuel system. So um, thanks for coming along. I hope that uh, some of the information I've shared today might help somebody out there who uh, is in the same position that I was in when I was kind of trying to figure out how to design and lay out uh, my fuel conversion system. So um, thanks for coming along. As always, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.